Say you don't like it, no No, you don't like it Let me read it, let me read Say you don't like it, no No, you don't like it Let me read it, let me read Say you don't like it, no No, you don't like it Let me read it, let me read Say you don't like it, no, you don't like it Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of the Rewriters Room. We are the men with the pen. I am one third of our illustrious trio, and I am back after my uh, many travels and just need some time off. I think one thing we've uh, we haven't done this a lot as a show, but like I think we've all missed at least one episode at this point. But it's not a big deal because we like could very easily like hold it down with 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 our our, our duo, whatever the duo is. Um, and yeah, I held it down without me again. So salute to y'all for that. But I'm, of course, Armand Sadler, the Roman Reigns of rhetoric, the Brock Lesnar of broadcasting, the John Cena of journalism, the Paul Heyman of podcasting. I'm here with my illustrious trio. CC, what's going on, my brother? What's good? It's CC, best rapper and producer in the whole wide world. Got body because I consume healthy products and do towel curls. Benevolent servant to the earth and philanthropist. And every phrase I say is a gem like amethyst. You could pick a nigga out of any random concert crowd in the world on stage or in the audience and put him next to me and women will be like who the fuck man's is this i may talk a lot but i only got one thing to say love yourself keep going you are the world give all you can take care of your body your people and your land what the fuck my nigga chan well, are y'all reporting live from the mid card and i only got one thing to say this week eat <laughs> The kid yeah. did it, man. I didn't. I I'll be the first one. I didn't see it for him. I didn't think he. I didn't think he was gonna pull it off. And I mean, as everyone knows, like you know, Braun will be fine. But I didn't know they was gonna do it. And the reason I say that it's now, because like, not that I didn't think he could win the match. Like winning the match, I think is one thing. But then giving him the new belt with the blue in it to me That's signals just hard. that like, yeah, it signals that like, oh, this is like a thing. Like he might not just you know pass this right back, you know, next pay per view or whatever. So. I got a shout out to you. Shout out to the grind. You know, I'm not a grind set guy, but like at the end of the day, I do respect somebody. Like it is cool looking back now and seeing like a wrestler's first gimmick to where they are now. Like I feel like I'm at that age where like I remember a lot of these first gimmicks now, and it's not just like, bro, you don't know what you know Triple H was doing when he first wrestled. Like, like yeah, you're right. He was the game, but when I was already aware of it, so I don't remember all that Hunter Hearst Helsley stuff. And so it's cool being like, yeah, that dude used to like dance with face paint like every week like not just like you know for like a cool dance break like rikishi like no no, that was every week he was doing some sort of dance and now he's intercontinental champion crowd entrance got he made yeet pop ins got he's got the stunner shades from 2009 back like he might start jerking next week bro for for way it's going so shout out to jay uso bro shout out, shout out to Uso, shout out to you know the uso penitentiary um, I'm sure they'll be back sometime shortly, but you know, for right now, it's, that's that's fire. And again, that belt, it's a beaut. That yeah. blue is abolish, is nice. abolish all prisons except for the Uso Penitentiary. <laughs> <laughs> that's my stance. <laughs> I love that. I love He's that. In the well, <laughs> another thing I love about this reign is one, they made it very clear. I don't think Braun is going back to Jay. Like he that that was like a very clear. This nigga's gonna be face full face very soon. But this also beats. The Triple H loves long reigns allegations. Like Braun held that shit a month and a half. Yeah. And honestly, if we look back at WrestleMania and the reset we got, like the tag titles eventually turned over. The US title eventually turned over. Like the world champions, even the world championship, like Priest had it for what, four months and then lost it. Like, so this whole Triple H loves long reigns thing, it, it, it's it's a bit too over overstated and overgeneralized because it's all new champions except for Cody. Yeah, and I yeah, would also like to see like where the data the data is that is the basis for him potentially having that philosophy considering that he got popping during the quick turnover era. Like he got mm -hmm. popping in 99 or whatever. Like I'm 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 just getting into 2000 now. If you would see how often these motherfucking title changes are happening on mm -hmm. TV on free TV, bro. Like the hardcore title was changing every literally every two weeks. Like I'm not used to people having like long. That's why for somebody my age, Roman Reigns' uh reign was really big for me because one, like people my age, like people my age younger, we never got to see 
the Bruno San Martino has been champion for four years thing. Like I've Hulk Hogan literally is Hulk Hogan for fucking 10 years straight type shit. I've never gotten to see that. And I missed John Cena. You know what I mean? So like for me, that was the first time I got to see that. I'm used to the quick turnarounds with the, the belts. Yeah. So that's not like I'm confused. I'm like, even even if it was a thing where he got to the point where everybody did have a long title reign, what I'm telling you is somebody who used to watch this all the time is that's new for me. So like even mm. that, even if it annoys you, it's new to me. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like you just said, like John Cena is a 15 time world champion. Like Randy Orton is a 15. That means he's won and lost that many Same times. Same with Triple H. Triple H has yeah. short reigns. It's like, like yeah. only people who aren't like that is like Batista and people like that. Like when we were growing up, that title was getting dropped every other pay per view, like damn near. And so, yeah, like you're saying, the data and stuff probably doesn't back it up. I think it's just one of those things when, like, your first impression is Gunther and Roman. People just assume that's what you're going to do forever. But it's like, it's like anything. If you're how you acted the first year of your job is not how you act year three of your job. You just you did something and you're gonna be different. And that's just not that's just human nature. Like he's not gonna be just every champion. We're going three years long hauling it. Like that's just not even realistic. Yeah, people also base it off NXT because I think Adam Cole is NXT champion for like 400 days. Uh, and I know Shayna had a long reign down there. Asuka, obviously, but like those are that's a that's a that's a very like dominant minority, but it's still a minority. Like even if those were very memorable reigns that's still a small sample size compared to the larger picture of it all. Yeah. And, and it's also, also that's the, sorry, go oh, I'm sorry. I was say that's the function of NXT. Like you don't need someone who's a 10 time NXT champion. Like that would be fucking stupid. Cause then it's like, how, why are you in NXT for this long? Like the whole point is that you have a title once, maybe twice. Then once you lose it, you go to the main roster. So like, yeah, yeah you're going to have long champions because you're not going to have a bunch of them. So also, like you're gonna have to prep certain people. You need to look at when the long champions happen because, like, this just it literally just all came to me just now as you were talking. The time that I was talking about when I wasn't used to, to champions having a championship for a long time, that's when the roster was stacked, and then mm-hmm. the roster wasn't stacked. And even in NXT, as y'all just pointed out, think about it. When Asuka, you know, Shayna Baszler, Adam Cole, when they're in their their championship reigns, can you name me three other niggas from NXT that was popping in NXT at that time? Just name them. Like, name Bro, he was facing Kyle O'Reilly and shit, man. <laughs> like, there okay. were popping people, but not people who could carry the brand. You, yeah, like Adam you have, and... You forget what the purpose of the title is. The purpose of the title is to say, when you look at this wrestling company, we want you to look at this person as the standard for this class, for this belt or whatever. Like, so yeah. when you think about that, look at NXT now or whatever. Look how quickly the title has changed in the last year. How many different people have had it on the men's side and the women's side or whatnot. Thanks. Why is that? Look at the roster. How many people can you name from there? I can name damn near everybody from the roster from NXT and I only watch it like twice a month. That's, yeah, that's different <laughs> than yeah. Black and Gold because I watch Black and Gold and the only niggas I remember from Black and Gold is niggas who got called up. I don't remember anybody else. Not a single person. Yeah, and also yeah. them is Triple H's favorites, and we could just leave it there. Like, let's be for real. Like, we also all know that. Adam Cole, is that's his boy. So, of course, you don't have a title forever. But, like, Adam Cole's not going to be changed. Quick question. Forever. Wait, wait. Let's just do a hot take real quick. You know, I've seen some tweets talking about, like, hey, Adam Cole is on track to resign or whatever, and it should be fine. He should stay with AEW, considering that he went there with his friends or whatever, and he was trying to avoid the manager shit. And we all seen how it was going with H now, or whatever. And you can play video games and still have your job and take time off. And he don't got he don't, he's not tied romantically to this place anymore. Do you think there's a possibility that he comes back? I mean, there's always a possibility because money yeah. is just money. But I I do think. There was a moment in NX, I mean, in WWE, where it was like, "Ooh, maybe this will be kind of indie-ish." And Adam Cole was on that wave, mm-hmm. but I feel like that wave has kind of passed. It did. And them, them, I love them. I love me a Johnny Gargano, Adam Cole, ten false finishes, six. Can I, I eat that shit up. But like, that's just not the wave right now. And like, realistically, do I think Adam Cole could be Roman Reigns? Do I think Adam Cole could be Gunther, Cody Rhodes? It's like it, it, it's just not the time for even like his 
character. But, you know, if him and Undisputed Era want to come back, get the tag belts or do an NXT run, I'll watch because it's fun. But I don't think – I think it, he would come back thinking he's going to be back Adam Cole, Bebe, And it's like, bro, you might have to grind it out in the mid car with us for a minute to even see if that's a possibility. Because right now – Johnny did. Johnny and Tommaso yeah. did. Yeah. And because that's but I, but I think in his mind, he's like, oh, I, why would I do that? Because I because when he was because in NXT, you're 145, I'm bigger than I mean, you. And yes, I don't but think about like that invasion angle, he was pro poised as like the third champion. So I yeah. think he would think Triple H is here. I'm back to that. Whereas that image of him and Adam Cole at SmackDown, and it's like, nah, bro, like yeah. that's just not. So I don't know if he would even want to do that. That's a good point. Exactly. What about you, Armand? Uh, I think I think it's possible. I think I would like to see it. I think, you know, what we've seen in people who have went to AEW and come back or people who started in AEW and have come over is you get developed, you get highlighted in just a way your strengths get played to in a way that they never would before. Um, I could I could see Adam Cole kind of recognizing that if if he came back, he would have to humble himself and recognize like the, the niggas who he was in WWE with a lot of them have, have leveled up and they're, they're ahead of him now. Like, but also it's nothing wrong with being a mid Carter. Like in this era, the mid card is lit in this era. It's, it's lit as fuck. Like that's what I was going to suggest. Could, could, could Adam Cole beat LA Knight? Absolutely. Could Adam Cole beat Jay Uso? Absolutely. <laughs> there you go. Could Adam, Adam like, Cole like, has a, has an opportunity to come in and be the next wrestler that makes the intercontinental championship. Like really like, cause the, it was, what was it? It was like it was like Seth. Um, oh, I feel like Miz nasty. Seth. It was yeah. It was Miz, Seth. Um, then Guther like kind of like brought it back. But if you see like no offense to Jay or whatever, I know he just got it or whatever, and I know they're trying to like keep him hot with it. But like when I think of an intercontinental champion type person, Adam Cole is that guy. That's he yeah. like the archetype. Yeah, yeah. he could be Chris Absolutely. Jericho. He he could do yeah. that if he commits to that lifestyle, like Lion Saw Chris Jericho era. I think you just did it. We, we get that popping because that can work. Yeah. yeah. I'd love to see it. Well, we have essentially a free written and pre written, <laughs> but we're going to do some promotion before we jump into trivia. Of course, uh, we are members of the A Show RNC network. Make sure you subscribe to us on all platforms, YouTube now, especially all episodes are going up on YouTube. And, and our episodes have sneakily been doing some good numbers. So whoever's been tapping up, tapping into us on YouTube or whatever country you're in, like, shout out to you. So um, also subscribe to our Patreon, patreon.com backslash the Asia RNC for extended rewriters room episodes or, and early access to our episodes, the War Report with Quan and Cyrus, and of course the A Show with J5 and Meals and all bonus content as well. We're going to jump into our trivia section. This week, it will be led by the good brother Channing, and I am once again defending wow. this, 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 this trivia title. Crazy. This trivia title. So, um, talk about long reigns. Yeah, oh. yeah. Talk about long <laughs> reigns, man. <laughs> All <laughs> right. Tri- 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 Triple H is booking the show. <laughs> booking trivia. <laughs> hey, bro, Triple H is booking trivia. That's fucking funny. I feel like Booker T right now. Damn. Ah uh, yeah. Oh, that is tri- uh-huh. Um. So this today's trivia is more related to just wrestling in general. So, um, when you're listening to this, we would just had the first episode of NXT on the CW. Um, as most people know, Raw is coming to Netflix this month now. In yeah, January month. 2025. Oh, never mind. This next next year. <laughs> um. But so we're just getting a lot of new shows on different channels. So I was just like thinking about that. So I'm like, let's do trivia about the history of Monday Night Raw. Um, all right. So these questions are all going to be related to something to do with Raw. Some of them are about the at first ever episode of Raw. Um, and we're just going to go through it. So uh, what is the month and year that Monday Night Raw debuted? Um, it's, it's March 1990 or 1991. No. Oh, 1989? No. Shit. Uh oh wait, wait, wait. No, sorry. I lied. It's shit. I feel like it's March, but I know it's in the early 90s. 93. Yep, it's 93. Okay. But it's not March though. You're close, but it's not March. No. February. Nope. April. April. Nope. May. Nope. June. January. January. Uh, Oh, yeah, because he Vince loves Vince loves the calendar. Like he just loves. A start and a finish. 
Yeah, he really does. All right. So, what was the first match on the first Monday Night Raw? Oh, I... uh, if you want some hits, this this one is related to the Bloodline, actually. Oh, uh, it was. So... 90s. And then think about the most racist character from the early '90s. Think about the really oh, racist characters. Oh my god! Um, was it the? Oh shit! Was it this? This from? Is this the group from the the trivia that we did last time? <laughs> nah. Okay. No, it it does. Like I said, it is involved the bloodline, but no, this is just it just happened to be that way. It is uh, okay. two very racist characters. Oh, is um, it Yokozuna versus? Yep, um, that's one. Versus Iron Sheik? No. Nope. 93. Close. 93, 93. Yokozuna versus fucking Tatanka? I don't know. <laughs> no. Oh, think this one is racist a... more so. I just feel like it's racist. Come think on. like stereotypical prop had a three part name. It sounds like a phrase. Um, Yokozuna oh. versus. Uh. Colorful hair. Doink the Clown? No. Colorful hair jacket. I know where you're going with this. Person is black. Yeah, I know. It's not Papa Shango, right? (sighs) Nope. It's um, they have their prop is a animal. Uh, I said Kamala, uh, didn't I? Or Kamala? You did, but it's not that person. Yokozuna versus Jake the Snake. Is nope. this me? Is this me blocking out racist shit that Vince did in the eighties? This and 90s? no, this one isn't as racist. The Yokozuna okay. one, I think, true. But this one is kind of racist. Okay. It's more so just like it's a little stereotypical of black people. To give you another, he had a prop. Damn. He had a was live a animal wing? prop. Close live animal prop. Live animal. What? He was live referred animal. to as the Birdman. Oh! 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 Fuck! Went by the this... name Sweet, Sweet Brown Sugar, Stagger Lee. D'Lo Brown? I don't know. <laughs> oh. You want me just uh, to say it? I used to give this one. Yeah. Coco Beware. Coco Beware. Uh... That's what it was. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm rolling through all, in my head. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, you're there because you're all naming of all of the crazy black. I'm like, Coco Beware. I'm seeing is him in my fucking head right now, and I just couldn't do the name. Yeah. yeah. It's and he has one of those you... names where it's like, you call you a black remember. man Coco, bro. Like I know why it, you put and CLC told on him to Coco beware. Yeah, we, beware. Come on. Told him beware, to beware, beware of Coco. <laughs> That's nuts. Okay. This next one. Um, Wait, hold on. Never mind. Yeah. I was about to say something crazy. I was gonna say like, which toy do you think was Coco Beware? Never mind. <laughs> uh, you know, Freak Bull. Shout out to Netflix if you haven't watched the documentary. It was. If you, you follow it. wrestling, it wasn't crazy new, but it's some wild shit for my friends who not watch wrestling. Um, so what is the first title that was defended on Monday Night Raw? And then second part, if you can guess who the champion was. It was the Intercontinental title. That is correct. Yeah, and it was, was it Shawn Michaels? The Heartbreak Kid. Son of a bitch. Wow. I swear I just completely guessed those two. Yeah. But <laughs> well, you think like, about this is, this is way before my time. But you got to think about like, it. You know forward. that 93 was like a, was, yeah. these were the bad years for them. So it was, the answers are at this point, Undertaker, Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, fucking Lex Luger. Yeah. Like. <laughs> Pretty much. Bro, that was like, why I was like, I had to get off the first episode. Like the first couple of years of Raw, it's a lot of Shawn Michaels. I see down the defenses just to give you a hit. Um, okay. So, obviously, like I said, uh, Raw is going to Netflix, but this, mm-hmm. I think, is definitely in our era, so I think this one you guys will know. Okay. What other channel was Raw on? Oh, you son of a bitch. Uh, other? Wait, wait, when? Like, Outside of the USA. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, so, so, so Spike TV. Yeah. Spike TV. Yep. That, that, that was when I started watching Raw. That's I what I'm saying. Very, this is what I remember. The very first episode I watched was the contract signing, where Shawn Michaels super kicked the he who shall not be named yes. and sign the contract leading up to WrestleMania 20. I remember when it moved to Spike feeling like, oh, it's going to be like edgier. And like, mm-hmm. I'm sure in some level it was, but it's just funny to think that like, because Spike is like the man channel. Oh yeah. This was, was the, good. this was that early 2000s misogyny on TV. Oh right? yeah. Bra <laughs> panties. Yeah. That's puppies a, era. Hey, Olivia Munn, we not going to look you up before 2008. Do it. <laughs> Don't do it. Okay. In terms of, you know, wrestling, one of the key 
figures in the, you know, the narrative is the brand extension where we had two completely separate brands. Yes. Um, give me the year and month. 99 August. Extension. I just watched no. it. Sorry. Oh, wait. So that's, you said no. That's not, not that. That's like, so like, I know what you're thinking of, but like, think like the, 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 like the first like draft of the modern era. So oh, not like oh, smack that. Yeah, yeah. So, so this was 2002. Yeah, 2000. It, and it, it was right after Mania, so it had to be like April, right? April Close. From May. Close. March. Yeah. May. Yeah, because actually March. WrestleMania used to happen in, in March. Because I'll, ne- I'll never forget the first Mania I watched, WrestleMania 20, it was March 14th, uh, wow. 2004. And now that feels crazy because WrestleMania 41 is going to be on 420 um, in yeah, Vegas. Yeah. And you know they did that shit on purpose because uh, Nevada, oh, yes. Nevada is one of them states. When we I legal in Vegas, out, yeah. I, I was just there. I went to Vegas. I, was I, I had a blast out there going Bro, to the dispensary. That big ass, that, if you on a strip, by the way, if you listen to this and you're going to stay on a strip for WrestleMania or anywhere near the strip, just let you know, you need to go to that cookie store early. It'd be a line. Yeah, it'd, it'd be, be a line. Nah, yeah, the cats will take you to the airport. Where you need to go is Planet 13 Dispensary. That joint is, is like a, a, a mall. It got like a little restaurant bar in there. Yeah. Like it's it, it, it was lit. It, it was incredible. It was it was different. But yeah. But yeah. Get... So CC, I know what you were talking about, but yes, I was talking about the draft. But they call it the brand extension. But anyway. So last one. This is a bonus one. Um Armand, you I'm cannot cooked. win. Yeah, I mean, Armand cool. has one, but this one is just kind of a fun one. So, and again, don't overthink this one. Just think Raw in the 90s. What was the main event on Monday Night Raw the first time it lost the ratings battle with WCW? That's a good question. Uh, That's a great ooh. question. Ooh. I know they started losing in 96. So mm-hmm. I'm going to say it was... Yeah, and just think 90s raw. I promise you, don't overthink it. Okay. Was so it like Steve start... Austin versus like Mick Foley or something? You are Steve almost Austin there. It's Hart. Steve Austin versus, again, you're thinking even Steve harder Austin than you know. Steve Austin versus Vince. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> that was the night that they lost? That was the main event, the night that they lost. Was That's Steve hilarious. versus Vince. That one? That's Fucking hilarious. Yeah, I don't know. Again, I was five at the time. I don't really know what was going on that day, but <laughs> I guess that was the day the belt came due, Bill came due. But yeah, the most quintessential 90s Raw match. And you can probably guess how, what happened during the match. Uh, but yeah, so that's a little bit of history of Raw. Wow. Raw is war, for those who are wondering. <laughs> and Raw is Jericho. What a time. What a time. Well, Despite the fact that the, the odds were stacked against me, I'm talking about <laughs> shit from before I was born or when I wasn't even aware of what was happening in life, the boy still got it done. The title still remains home. Speaking of the title remaining home, this week's rewrite, this episode's rewrite rather, will go into a time where Roman, one of the times within his reign where he had multiple ops coming at him at the exact same time so we finished off with jimmy uso being introduced back into the bloodline and that power struggle and we're gonna we're gonna pick back up right at when roman defended his title against edge at money in the bank and go all the way up until that fateful controversial extreme rules match with finn balor where two arguable all-time talents came back in this time period and faced off with Roman, whether it was a match, whether it was just toying around with him and his wise man and everything that came of that, a really, a really dope time in WWE, I would say, because this was when they uh, were back on the road, back in front of fans. And it was just like, damn, like the, the power, the power is really back. So whoever wants to kick it off, it's all yours. I'll start. I have a, I have a little bit of an odyssey. So, um, for again a little catch up story, I just did. Roman has completely went Mad King mode. So, but he's also got the Usos tag team championships. Um, but at this point, he's kind of started being like proactive. That's like his big thing that he thinks people are trying to always get at him. And so he's like, I'm trying to sniff things out before they get to me. 
So after uh, Roman Reigns um, and the Usos all set in gold, they come out and cut a promo. And, you know, Roman's kind of in a good mood. You know, he's beating Daniel Bryan. He's a champion. He's like, you know, who 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 do you think will challenge me next? Like, who's going to come out here and say they deserve a shot at the tribal chief? I, I'm just dying to know. I got to know. You think you know me. Oh, his edge comes out. But it's time. And instead of attacking him like he does in real life, he comes out calmly at the top of the ramp. And he says, you know, now that Daniel Bryan's gone, me and you got a score to settle. You know, he took my match at Mania. I got to see it through. Um, so now I only have one more thing to get out of my way. These two little flunkies next to you, that's the only thing keeping that tile around your waist. So the next time you see me, I'm getting rid of him. And then he just walks back. Uh, next SmackDown, it cuts to, you know, Roman, Paul, the Usos, they're backstage. They go into Pierce's office. Uh, you hear like a little like commotion. And then you see Roman come out. He's doing the thing you see that Roman does or like any type of gangster movie where he's clearly intimidated someone, but he's acting like they're friends. And he's like, got his hand on his shoulder. He's like, oh, Adam, thanks so much, man. I appreciate you helping me out with that. And he's like, yeah, no worries. And once I, you know, we get that contract signed, I'll let you know, you know, who, who your challenger will be for that title. He's like, I appreciate that, Adam. And so it is announced that in the main event of SmackDown that night, it will be a handicap, no DQ match, the Usos versus Edge. Roman Reigns, he's feeling so good that he's got this match off. He knows that his, cha his challenger is not going to be Edge because he's already said the contract's after someone else. So he's happy. He said, you know what? I'm going to watch from the back. I'm going to get on the elliptical, get my knees together. And let you guys dismantle Edge. I won't even come out there with you. So during the match, at first, you know, it's Edge is showing a little heart. You know, he's got the experience over the Usos. Um, but eventually, you know, they just kind of take, you know, control. Um, and so right before it gets to a point where they're really, you know, beating his ass, you hear like, oh, my God, that's Seth Rollins music. Seth Rollins rushes. Um, the ring with a chair in hand takes out both Usos. When I say takes out, he goes rabbit dog on these niggas. Like he just beats them up, takes the ring steps, crushes Jay's knee, gives a concerto to Jimmy, gives a concerto to Jay. I mean, the Usos are in a bad way to the point where the ambulance has to come down. Not the ambulance, the ambulance, because it's because the Usos. Um, it comes down, gets them both out of there. Rome is pissed, and it does the thing that I used to love they did more of in the 90s, where they're cut to backstage, and so they show Rome on, like, the big Titantron thing, and so they show Roman on, like, the little screen, and he's pissed. He's like, what's going on? And he's, he's Seth and Edge in the middle of the ring, and they're like, you know, Seth's fired up with his black jacket on. Edge is fired up, and he's like, I found the one guy who hates you more than I do, and I knew that if I gave him a target, he'd hit it. So now that your boys are out the way, it's to me and you. And Roman's like, nah, nah, nah. Like, we already got the title out to someone else, whatever. So next SmackDown. Now, at this point, also because this is still, like, quasi no rules era, Seth is just now, like, fucking around on SmackDown. And so him and Edge are now they go back to Pierce, and they're like, you got to give me that match. Like, I earned it. I'm a vet. I don't know how many years I have left. This is the only opportunity where the Usos are going to be gone. I've earned it. you got to give me that match. And I was like, okay, I'll see what I can do. I'll talk to the challenger. He hasn't signed it yet. I'll just like, you know, give it up. So money in the bank comes around. Usos are still hurt. We get Edge v. Roman with Seth in Edge's corner and Paul Heyman in Roman's corner. The promos leading up to it have a quasi like Rocky vibe where it's like both of them training. And Seth is like, you got to dig deeper. Like you got to be that old guy. And Paul's like talking to Roman, like you got to like show them that you are the real tribal chief. Like Edge has done a lot of things, but you are like the most dangerous man at WWE. Da, 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 da. And so we get to the match. As with most Roman matches, the referee gets knocked down this time by getting speared after Edge gets out the way. And then you see Rollins go over and get the WWE uh, Universal Championship, and he goes to Edge. He's like, use this. Take out Roman. And Edge is like, nah, like I can't do it. Like I'm trying to win straight up. And Seth's like, what are you talking about? You know, referee's still down. Edge and Roman brawl again. And Seth is the second time. is like, bro, take this title. Knock him out. Like, you're not going to do this without it. And Edge is like, no, like I'm winning straight up. I don't want to retire knowing that like I stole a champion. Chip. 
And so the third time, Seth is like, he gets into the ring this time. He's like in front of Edge. He's like, take this title and take him out. You can't do this by yourself. You need to take him out. And Edge is like, no. And then he pushes Seth. Seth comes back, crashes him with the title. He's like, you're not prepared to do what it takes to beat Roman, so you don't deserve this championship. You're too soft. You're not the old Edge anymore. Roman wins the match. This tails off our Seth Rollins and Edge feud, which happens in real life, and they have a Hell in a Cell match. Um, After the match, Roman is celebrating. He's like, I didn't see that coming, but I pulled it off. He's like in the corner with Paul Happy. Then the horns hit. You see John Cena come out with the contract. He's like, Adam called me up. I said, yeah, that's fine. I'll take off money in the bank as long as I get SummerSlam. And he's like, can see me. That was a contract at Roman's face. Roman's pissed. He's like, not only do I have to face John Cena at SummerSlam, I don't even have the Usos with me. The Usos are gone. What's going to happen? This isn't fair. Over the next SmackDowns, Roman's like faking injuries. He comes into one SmackDown with like a big cast, like the Tommy John like cast. He's like, I can't wrestle. I can't. I'm not clear to wrestle. Um, and basically just tries to like duck John in any way possible. He's like, John's not even officially a wrestler. There's like an injunction. He's just like, goes very like litigious, kind of like corporate tribal chief a little bit. Um, but in the end, you know, there's no way for him to get him out of it because Adam is basically like, if you do not fit, you know, if you do not you defend your title at one of our major four pay-per-views, you have to vacate it. So if you can't wrestle, you can't wrestle. And so Roman's like, all right, whatever. So Roman versus John Cena, SummerSlam. Match goes crazy. They're destroying shit, but it's not paranoia. It's the Usos. The Usos return. John Cena, double super kick, double frog splash. One, two, three. Roman wins. SummerSlam ends. I do not have the Brock Brock Lesnar return here because I hated how they did that. I didn't think that I didn't like how they went back to back big returns like that. Next SmackDown. Roman is back. He's on top. He's like, you know what? I'm not going to get surprised again. We're not going to have another challenger pop up. You know what we're going to have? We're going to have a tribal tournament. And the winner of the tribal tournament gets to face me at Extreme Rules. And so he's like, I've already picked the people. So here's our bracket. We're going to have Jinder Mahal versus Finn Balor. We're going to have Karrion Cross, Karrion Cross versus Mad Cat Moss. We're going to have Drew McIntyre versus Braun Strowman. And in our last quarterfinal match, we will have Kofi Kingston versus Brock Lesnar. So as these matches turn up, Finn Balor, as it breaks my heart, takes out Jin, Jinder uh, with a coup de gras. Karrion Cross defeats Mad Cat Moss in a very spooky, very scarlet heavy match. Drew McIntyre defeats Braun Strowman. And in a bit of redemption for our king, Kofi Mania, Gets the quick roll up after Brock Lesnar attempts another quick five second F5 to beat Brock Lesnar and advance to the second round. Black Power. Our, yeah, man, I had to do it. I had to get I had to get Kofi to win. You know, I had to do that. Um, and then our second round, um, Finn Balor defeats Karrion Cross in a battle of the fake demons. Um, and Kofi Kingston, surprising a lot of people, defeats Drew McIntyre. Trouble in paradise, not in this match. Um, and in our final, we have a true NXT quasi flippy guy banger between Kofi Kingston and Finn Balor. In the end, Finn Balor is victorious. Uh, he faces Roman Reigns at Extreme Rules. At Extreme Rules, no demon. Um, Roman Reigns and Finn Balor have a match that does not have that weird hump thing that Finn Balor did. I want to be very clear that does not happen because I did not like that. Um, but in the end, Roman Reigns does prevail with the help of the Usos. But what is different about this ending is that during the match, Jay Uso accidentally super kicks Roman. It doesn't take him out, but it does stun him. And after the match, as they're walking up the ramp, you can clearly hear Roman be like, hey, don't let that happen again. You can be replaced. You're Us right now, but that doesn't mean you'll be a Us forever. And so now we have a little bit of friction in the bloodline because I don't think at this point any of them realized that, like, it was anything beyond just we're family. Now they're starting to realize, like, oh, this is like a actual, like, organization. Like, I can't just be like, this is my cousin. I'm always down, which also makes the will make you start to think 
who else could join the bloodline if it's not just purely based off blood? And that's the that, that was fire, bro. Yeah. Once I was like, I wanted Brock in here a little bit. I want a hint of Brock, yeah, but I feel yeah. like too much Brock would overpower it. Cause and then I also like the tournament idea because I got throw Bro, tribal there. tournament is cr- I think I, as soon as you said that, I was like, they might have to fuck with that. Like they might they have might to have actually to do, do that. that There's cool. a lot of ways they can go with it, man. That's cool. I fuck with that. CCO up next. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll grab it. So like for me. Um, fuck Edge, send that nigga to AEW as fast as he can, or whatever. For me, I'm just gonna start after that nigga get whooped at, at Money in the Bank. What the fuck is we wasting time for? He literally had like a month long program. Like, fuck him. He's all right. He'll be fine. So, what happens is Roman beats Edge at, at Money in the Bank. Cena comes out, or whatever. He does his thing for the challenge. They stand in the ring, look at each other, or whatever. And instead of it going like, you know, going out for the show, or whatever. John, at some point, like, you know, because he always trying to hype up the crowd, he turns around to hype up the crowd again, turns back around, gets fucking Superman punch. Roman's laughing on his way out of the ring, walking up to the ramp, walking up the ramp. Then uh, the next, uh, the following SmackDown, Cena challenges Roman to the SummerSlam match. He's like, Roman, you're scared. You can't face anything head on and you never have. You've always had help since the moment you stepped in here. You've had help from the very top all the way down to the people at the bottom, like your cousins, the Usos. <laughs> and, then, and then he goes, and then he goes, think about it. You waited until I left to become the tribal chief. You waited until I left to do blah, 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 blah. And then he goes, that's why he attacked me from behind, because, of, because whether it's on this mic, as we've seen, or in this ring, he can't see me. Or whatever. And then they they take a shot to Roman in the back being fucking upset at this shit or whatever. The Usos is like, damn, we just some chumps. Roman not really defending that fact or whatever, being like, yeah, yeah, I might be, but like, it's this about me or whatever. So, like, you know, just like in real life, Roman doesn't take this challenge at first. It's fucking John Cena. He's not going to take it at first, but he does accept the challenge that Finn lays down on it, right? So then, um, when Romo cuts a promo, like about this whole thing, he's like, you know, John, you're really, really selfish or whatever, right? Um, went 15 time WWE champion, whatever, blah, blah blah. And he's like, it seems like you just want to add as many credentials to your resume as possible. First, it was WWE superstar, then it was champion, then it was actor, then it was husband. Well, that one didn't work out so well. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then he goes, and now it seems like you want to be universal champion, something that you've never been, something that you can add on to your resume. And for once, John, it's eating you up to know that there's something that I did in this world that you can't and will never do. And that's become the universal champion. And at this point, this nigga's cooking. Like, he's going stupid at this point. So, so, uh, so now, and then he just ends it. And he's like, and just like you did when you were here to be champion, you're willing to disregard the hardworking, show up everyday superstars in the back like me to just to pad your stats. So now Roman is likening himself to motherfucking like mid carters and catering niggas to make John look like the asshole or whatever, right? And he's like, Supreme yo, gaslighter. Just <laughs> Bro. One, one of the one of the great greatest gaslighters we've ever seen in my life. Yeah, he's going stupid at this. You on at this point, you like, damn, is Roman a fake? Roman might be right. John Cena is asshole. <laughs> so like he's like Hollywood accomplishments don't get you to the front of this line. We work a certain way in this business and you going off and making a million dollars for a movie doesn't qualify you to be a universal champion. In fact, I've got a line of people already or whatever. There was just this guy named Finn Balor. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. Unlike you or whatever, he's also held this championship or whatever. Actually, you know what? He should be the number one contender. Actually, you know what? Since you want to be number one contender so bad, maybe you and Finn should have a match together. And all this is is really just him trying to get further and further away from actually having to defend the championship. <laughs> Whatever. This whole his whole idea is the more Finn and John fuck each other up, whoever come out of that, they're gonna be fucked up. And then I gotta fight them, but at least they damaged or <laughs> whatever, which is incredibly smart. So then or whatever, um, uh, Finn comes out during this promo, and Finn's like, hey. 
I want that universal championship. Like I said, I never lost it. I don't care who's in front of me to get to it, whether it be Roman. I don't care uh, who's in front of me, whether it be a future Hall of Famer or a Hall of Famer who doesn't belong here anymore or whatever. And Cena is just like, what the fuck? Cena's like, wait, hold on. He comes out and he's like, listen, you know, Finn, I don't really have a problem with you. I just want the universal championship. But, you know, once I beat Reigns, uh, or whatever i've always liked you you're you're very welcome to come and be the first challenger or whatever um he was like you know um you know by that point you will have properly waited your 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 uh your turn anyway or whatever and um finn is like um my boy that's all good and well but i actually been here and you have it so then they get a little heat and then cena's like you know what fuck it i will fight you for the number one contender so next week is finn versus cena or whatever for the number one contender for the universal title or whatever. So they having their match or whatever we get towards the finish. Um, the Usos try to jump in and um at first they're attacking Cena. So we're like, oh shit, obviously they're trying to help uh Finn or whatever. But what happens is Cena kind of catches on and both Finn and Cena end up like helping get the Usos out of the situation. It's just that Finn is dealing with like Jimmy after John already got Uso out, or I'm sorry, Jimmy, uh, I'm sorry, Jay out. And then by the time Finn gets Jimmy out, he's turning around and guess who catches him? AA and whatever. It's no longer the number one contender. So Cena wins next week. Cena cuts a promo. He's like, listen, I'm humble enough to understand that I did have to under, uh, under, uh, earn it. I'm actually happy that I did go through that process. And now that I'm thinking about it, with the the disqualification, even though I did technically win the match, I still feel like, and you know, regardless of what we have between each other, I feel like Finn didn't get a fair shot. And when I do beat Roman, that offer to come challenge me still stands. In fact, you're number one on the list or whatever, right? And then Cena's, you know, comes back to Roman. He's like, he does the thing that he does in real life where he goes, you know, um, when I win, people are going to ask, who did Cena beat to become 17-time champion? So then... The next week, Roman comes out and he does the thing that he does in real life, which is to offer um, to leave WWE if he loses. And then Cena goes, well, that sounds good. And I'm fine with it or whatever. And then Roman goes, well, that's really good because I'm glad that you like that, that John. I'm like you. I'm glad that you like our agreement because part of our agreement is that if you lose, John, you can never show up on my show ever again or whatever. Right. But that's a that's a really good stipulation because what I said was or what Roman said was my show. So that means all that means that this stipulation really, when you look at it, is not that John Cena can't come back to the WWE. He can't come back to SmackDown ever again or whatever. And considering that we already have at this point in real life, John's on his you know retirement thing, which we already knew he was going to be on or whatever. Right. It just limits him to a three hour show, which is cool because we need to fill time anyway. So, boom, we got that out the way. Uh, we get Rain Cena at SummerSlam. Roman goes for an AA. John counters, and then he like pushes Roman into the ref or whatever. And at that point, we're like, "Oh shit, shenanigans!" And everybody's expecting the Usos, but um, you know, there's just like some some stuff like going on. And then uh, you just hear uh, Corey go out of nowhere, like, "Yo, look, look, like, oh look, or whatever." And like you can see by the timekeepers area, the Usos are like fucked up. And it's like, what happened to the Usos? And then the camera pans up. It's <laughs> And then he comes in and he fucking F fives both of them. He F fives Roman and then he F or I'm sorry. No, he yeah, he F fives uh Roman, then he F fives Cena. And because F uh Roman got F5 first, he recovered first. So he's able to recover enough to just lay an arm right on top of Cena. And he gets the one two fucking three or whatever but obviously you know the ref gets up after the f5s and shit so the following smackdown finn uh does the coup de grave for uh, on roman he's like listen i really want this fucking title fuck brock fuck all that shit he said listen your last few challengers have been hall of famers legendary status these are all people who have done so much in this game that their resumes alone could make up for multiple wrestlers and it's obvious because they can't keep up with you that's why they're in the Hall of Fame, because their best times are behind them. But my time is now. Boom. And that, like, wraps up his promo. We actually get Finn with, like, a killer-ass promo, right? So then next week, we get um, uh, the Finn... Uh, I'm sorry. We uh, we go to Extreme Rules. We get the Finn-Roman uh, title match or whatever. The turnbuckle break actually, like, still happens or whatever. He's a demon. The lights go out. 
But when the lights come back on, in the middle of the ring, it's burn. <laughs> Whatever. So, uh, Roman or, or uh, so, but like Roman doesn't see him from like where his standpoint in the the ring is. Like Brock's not in the exact middle; he's just kind of like standing in the ring. He's kind of like behind Roman. So Roman's going for a spear, and then Rome, uh, like as he starts to run, Brock grabs him by the shoulder, and Roman's like he's like both shocked and like trying to like you know he has to like sell at the same time. He's like what what the fuck, and he just gets F five. Roman uh, and uh, Brock F fives him twice. Finn finally gets up, goes after Brock. Brock F5s Finn twice or whatever. Um, and then Brock goes out of the ring and Brock and Paul have a stare down. Because at this point, we've been like, hey, why didn't Paul, why didn't you let him know I was going to be at, you know, why, you know, blah, blah, blah. Roman sees it too. He's just recovering at this point. He's like, oh, you know, I'm getting up or whatever. But then he looks around and he looks, he's looking for his wise man. He sees his wise man. He's like, what's my wise man looking at? And he's looking at Brock and he goes, what the fuck is going on here? What? Wait, did, did my wise man set this up? Did my wise man set me up? And now, like, you can see him, like, getting mad at, like, Paul. And you're like, oh, shit. Rome is distracted. Finn is going to take this shit. So then, like, Finn tries to take advantage or whatever. And he's running up to him to do the fucking shotgun uh, drop kick or whatever. So he can do the coup de grace or whatever. And Roman just happens to catch it. He pushes him away. Roman uh, or Finn uh, hits the ropes. Roman hits the ropes. Spears. Uh, and then Finn loses, and that's how we close that out. But now we go into the Brock Paul program with even more suspicion because now Roman is going, wait a second, you used to work with Brock Lesnar. I heard about Brock Lesnar com coming back, and he came back and almost cost me one match. He almost cost me this match too. And now it seems like, from what I'm seeing, that you're the reason why he came back and almost cost me this match. So now moving forward in my timeline, Roman is like looking at Paul, wondering if Paul really wants him to have the, like Paul might really love him and really want him to be the tribal chief, but he's wondering if Paul actually wants him to be the champion, which are two different things. So boom. Yeah, I like that. I like the, I wrote down, like I like the whole like, Roman is better at Cena than something. I feel like that's like something that doesn't really happen with Cena is that someone's exactly. like, no, I've done something you have not done. Exactly. Because like, if you go back to if you go back to their promo, the one, you know, that famous one, John Cena says, I came back because you couldn't do your job. And I was right. like, what if Roman was able to frame it the, the same way where he was just like, you want to be here because you try to do some shit that I did that you can't do. <laughs> which which he actually he actually did say that in the summer of 2021 he was like you know you're good and you're good you're good enough to be the wwe champion but you're not good enough to be the universal champion and it was like you know <laughs> you know yeah. roman spitting because roman turned the universal title into the it title and mm -hmm. cena could never win that so it was like this nigga now he, he not wrong we Which is wrong. crazy because, like, it definitely was not. Like, I used to hate that little blue title. It was. I'm, like, I'm not going. I'm, I'm not going front. I enjoyed Goldberg having it. Oh yeah, um, it was cool, but it wasn't more popping than WWE titles. Oh, at, until ever, Roman got it. At, yeah, at <laughs> all. It, the, <laughs> yeah. the, 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 J Five says it all the time that title was cursed until Roman got it. Because yeah. you think about it, it went Finn. Finn got hurt. Then KO won it. Solid Reign. Goldberg won it. Brock won it. Brock held it for like over a year from 2017 to 2018. Then Roman won it. Then Roman had to go away for cancer. Then Brock got it again. And then Seth beat him and then Brock won it again. And then Seth got it back. And then the fiend and then Goldberg and then Braun, then the fiend, then Roman. Like that's, Bro, that's a nasty history. Fuck, that's a that nasty is, history. Yo, that is disgusting. <laughs> nasty title history. But man, I, yeah, that Braun, that Braun ring, right? that and I love the fiend, but them Braun few fiend man. <laughs> I was I, I was so happy for Braun and for, for the moment, the moment he got at Mania, and then I saw the rest of the reign, and I was like, yeah, nah, nah, man, nah. I ain't it, this, this nigga defended the title in a handicap match against Miz and Morrison. Like, come on, man, come on. They they had that boy Morrison doing a lot. He was working. I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Johnny Drip Drip. Working, Shout out to my nigga to Johnny Drip Drip, bro. What you Terrible, bro. Oh, my God. Um, <clears throat> so mine's actually it's there are some similar similarities to both the odds, but <clears throat> like Cece did, Edge 
you get your title match and miss money in the bank, you lose, you go feud with Seth Rollins. And in hindsight, I didn't want Edge to win at Money in the Bank. I thought he was going to win at WrestleMania. When he came back at Money in the Bank, I was like, there's no way he's going to beat Roman. Like, there's no way. And they were building up that Seth anger so much. It was just like, yeah, Seth is going to get involved because Seth felt entitled to the title match. So Cena comes out, obviously hits Roman with the you can't see me. We, we think, oh, that's going to be the match for SummerSlam. Like, with fans coming back in Vegas, that shit going to be lit. So Cena comes out and officially challenges Roman. But as we remember, Finn was did that that like two year stint on NXT, and as uh, Cena is challenging Roman to the title match, Finn comes out and says, "John Cena, all due respect to you, sixteen time world champion, one of the greatest we've ever seen. I just came off of being the NXT champion. After like, I was the first Universal champion. I went down to NXT, won the title. I'm back now. I want to get back the title that I never lost. You're in my way." And Cena's like, "Well." I have a lot of respect for you too, Finn Balor. You, you've beaten me before. So so let's have a match. So we get John Cena versus Finn Balor on TV. Because I think I, I enjoyed that Cena return so much in 2021. But we only saw him wrestle one match. It was SummerSlam. And, and, and then he went away again. So nah, Cena, you got to come back. You got to do something on TV. So we get Cena versus Finn Balor on TV. John Cena defeats Finn Balor. And his match is locked in for... Uh, for uh, for SummerSlam with with Roman Reigns, they obviously spend the next couple of weeks promoing. I'm not going to change any of those promos because I thought those promos were stellar. So there's nothing to change there. SummerSlam comes. John Cena versus Roman Reigns. At the time in 2021, I wanted Cena to win, and I thought Cena was going to win. And I'm going to live that dream out here. So <laughs> Roman Reigns, after holding the title. And, and, and it's poetic. He returned at SummerSlam 2020. And he and also Cena had never beaten Roman Reigns in singles competition. So what better way to for him to finally overcome that demon and get number 17 than to defeat Roman Reigns at SummerSlam? I will say, I like that they had Roman beat Cena clean in, in real life. Like the Usos didn't get involved. So Roman beat Cena clean. But th- there was that moment where Cena is in the corner, does the ooh ah, and like tries to spear Roman. He actually gets the spear off, hits the AA, hits the super AA, pins Roman. John Cena wins his 17th world championship. Confetti is falling from the sky. The pyro is insane. Everyone is hype. It is so fucking lit. Roman is standing out there distraught. Paul Heyman is trying to comfort him. And then out of nowhere, out of nowhere, Cena is lifted into the air, spun around, and F5'd by none other than Brock Lesnar. And it's not just one F5. This is this is SummerSlam 2014 all over again. He gets hella Germans, hella, hella F5s to the point where ambulance has to come out. And they have to cart John Cena to the back. And we're like, damn, Cena got number 17 and got cooked. What's going to happen to the future of the company? The very next SmackDown, Brock Lesnar makes his official return. And he says, well, it looks like your champion can't compete. I I took him out. So it looks like I should be the champion. Roman Reigns comes out and says, there's absolutely no way that you're going to be handed the title. I'm still I'm still the tribal chief. If anyone should be the rifle champion, because I, I have a rematch clause that I was going to use. So honestly, Adam Pierce should just come out here and hand me the title. Adam Pierce comes out and says, Brock Lesnar, not only did you return without letting anyone know, but you injured our world champion on the night where he broke a record and became a 17-time world champion. So Brock Lesnar, you are suspended. So Brock gets suspended. So Roman's like, all right, well, Brock's out the picture. Obviously, I should be the one who who, who's given the title. Like, like it shouldn't even be a conversation. Obviously, I'm the one who should be champion. Finn Balor comes out again and says, I still want to get that title back that I never lost. You lost it. I'm not going to ask Adam Pierce to hand it to me. I'm more than willing to earn it. Roman Roman Reigns says, okay, you want to earn it? You got to go through the Usos. But not not one on one. You got to beat them in a handicap match. So Finn Balor takes on the Usos in a handicap match 
to earn the right to to face Roman for the vacant Universal Championship. Finn Balor defeats them, gets beat up after the match. But then Brock Lesnar comes out and helps him. F5s the Usos, takes them out. So it's like, ah, shit, man. Well, like, the, the Usos are cooked. Brock is here. Finn is here. He won. So um, and Brock's suspension was lifted at this point. It was, it was a very brief one because what we don't know is Ro- Paul Heyman is working behind the scenes to help Brock. Because oh, he's, yeah, he's I like, forgot in your storyline, yeah. He's, he's like, damn, like, Brock is like, like, Paul Heyman was the one who told Brock to come to SummerSlam. And he, he didn't know Brock was going to do what he did to John Cena. And so now with his suspension, Paul Heyman goes to the board of directors, gets Brock's suspension lifted early. So Brock is able to help Finn with the Uso. So at uh, the upcoming Extreme Rules, we got Roman Reigns versus Finn Balor. They have a good couple weeks of, of promo battles and all that. And Finn is like, I have to tap back into a place that I haven't gone in a while to defeat Roman Reigns because Roman Reigns keeps putting all these demons in my way, but he doesn't know that I, <laughs> I am the ultimate demon. So Finn Balor promises the demon is going to come out at Extreme Rules. So Roman Reigns versus Finn Balor, Extreme Rules, stellar match. Everything happens the same. Turnbuckle breaks. Roman Reigns wins the vacant world championship. So he's only without the title for like a month and a half, like like two months. Um, and then the very next week, Brock comes back and says, okay, well, you're champion again. You defeated Finn Balor. There's no one else in your way. I, I want my title match. And Brock is campaigning for it, campaigning for it. And Roman continues to say no. Adam Pierce comes out and says, I crown Jewel. I, I didn't want to give this match to Brock. Brock has been causing a lot of chaos for my roster. He injured John Cena. He injured the Usos. But I was convinced by a very convicted, passionate man behind the scenes to give you this match. So at Crown Jewel, it will be Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar. Roman, Brock, both of you have Paul Heyman to thank for this. Roman is obviously looking shell-shocked, like, what the fuck is going on? Brock is just laughing, happy as shit. Roman immediately walks to the back, goes to his locker room, fucking pushes the door open aggressively. Paul isn't in there. SmackDown ends with Roman just looking around his locker room, confused, wondering what's going on and why his wise man is helping out someone else. And I'll end it there because our next chapter will be essentially the full Brock Lesnar story, everything that happened with Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar leading up to WrestleMania 38. But yeah, the key thing for me was John Cena wrestling on TV. Like, that's just like, do that. John Cena versus Finn Balor, good match. Brock Lesnar coming in, wrecking shit, causing chaos. Cena getting the uh, title 17. You know, as tough as it is to break up Roman's reign, like, hey, man, it is what it is. This is this my rewrite. Like, it, it is what it is. <laughs> Roman going to be all right. I would just like to so. officially announce to everyone listening, if, if you've made it through this episode, whether it be, you know, chronologically, and you've listened to the, the six that came before this, or if this is the first episode, but in our entire season, where we're covering the bloodline and we're rewriting the story. This is the very first time somebody has had Roman book to lose the championship. We finally got there. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah, man. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's like I, I dabbled in it a bit by having Drew beat him at Survivor Series. But I was like, you know what, man? G- 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 give Cena number 17. G- g- give him number 17. Like, make it a moment. Make people believe, like, oh, shit, Cena might be around for a while, and then Brock Lesnar button. So, I love there it that. is. I love that because that that's, like, your story was so Triple H coded. <laughs> it was so Triple H coded because you gave somebody a moment in the sun, and then you immediately ripped it away from them. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes, sir. That's yes, exactly sir. what, that's, I feel like, Honestly, I feel like that was one of the plans that was on the table. I feel like that was like a potential because you can't have John Cena come back, be champion because he's not going to work like he can't work or whatever. So what you could do is go, well, somebody fucked him up to where he can't work. And now he has to relinquish the title. Blah, blah. I love I love that. And I also love how we both said, yeah, John Cena needs to have a TV match with Finn Balor. <laughs> That's, yeah. It just was it, it was a no brainer for me. I was like, why the fuck would I not do that? 
It'd be a good Finn match me? too. Because Finn can work with him. Absolutely. Are you stellar. kidding me? Are you shitting I mean, me? That's probably like... a good match. Oh. Whew. I love that. That was a good one, y'all. Yeah, that was fun. All right. So let's move into our not so pre write. Um, I'll start first. So being three Cornell gentlemen, um, you guys know my my good line brother goes by the name of De- Denzel Reese, otherwise known as Wolf. Um, and wh- wh- while we were going through our um, our process and becoming uh, alphas, he coined this term called the WL because we we used to experience a lot of L's along the way, but sometimes those L's would be. In the form of a W, it will kind of be an L, but it will be a W at the same time. You winning and losing at the same time. And the discourse lately in WWE with regards to Braun Breaker losing the Intercontinental title, Julia losing her her match against Roxanne on the CW NXT debut. You can go on and on through history with losses that people have made into big deals that didn't need to be them. The concept of the WL with regards to wrestling and wrestling literacy, shout out to Chris Novak for coining that. You take the loss now and the loss can become a major W later on. Like being a a wrestling fan at, at our age, truly understanding the product, loving the product is seeing the value in someone losing. Cody Rhodes losing at WrestleMania 39. Would it have been awesome for him to win his, his first WrestleMania main event? Absolutely. But is that really the babyface way? Like, he came in undefeated, beat Seth Rollins three times, injured, away for hella months, comes back, wins the Royal Rumble at number 30, and then wins at the WrestleMania main event? That, that's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. But the journey he went on after losing to Roman Reigns, dealing with Brock Lesnar, winning the tag titles with Jey Uso, losing the tag titles with Jey Uso, feuding with Shinsei Nakamura, Being in the Royal Rumble, winning back to back, The Rock coming in, almost taking it like all all these moments lead to led to an even better W for him. And I think you have to see the value in that. Braun Breaker, he lost his first title match to to Tommaso Ciampa. Then he won it the second time. Then he lost the title to Dolph Ziggler. Then he won the title on TV on Raw. And NXT Superstar won the NXT title on TV on Raw. Much bigger moment. Much more eyes on it. And you can go on and on and on. And I think these, these and I understand you, you being emotionally connected to a certain character, a certain wrestler, and wanting to see them do great. I'm, I'm a Drew McIntyre fan. I fucking get it. <laughs> I, I, I get it more than, I'm a Finn Balor fan. What, what happened to Drew McIntyre before he became Drew McIntyre? Was he, did he work for the WWE? What happened the first time? Yeah, he, he, like, he was in the company lost. for like, he was in the hell. company from like, yeah, 2009 to like 2014. And all he, he had fired. to, yeah, the only thing he could lay claim to was the IC title and tag titles. Wait, so is um, getting fired an L? And if it is, what did that L do to Drew McIntyre? It motivated made- him to go to TNA and be a dog, to get more swole, to get better in the ring. And he came back and he was undeniable. And that's that's really all, all I want to say is like, it's like life. Like sometimes you got to think about, how something isn't happening to you, but it's happening for you. Come on, bro. And so as much as you can wallow in the sadness of a bad thing happening, it's like, what did I learn from this? How can I use this knowledge to then be better later on? And I think they, they show us that so many times in wrestling and these fans just don't get it. So I've, I've really embraced what I'm going to flip from uh wolf's WL. I'm going to call it the LW. You got to take that L. You got to use that motivation, turn it into a W. First of all, shout out to my son. Shout out to my son, Wolf. If that nigga listening or whether he not listening, that's my nigga right there. Anybody that, man. who ever met that nigga would know that's one of the realest niggas living. I just want to shout out my nigga real quick. Yeah, it's funny because it's also like, I mean, it's a very true life lesson, but it's also basic storytelling. Like, if you've ever watched any movie or read any story, there's always the fall and then there's the climb. Like, if you watch any romance movie, there's always the type where they get into a fight so that he can come back and apologize. Any sports, sports movies aren't about teams that never lose and win every single game and nothing bad ever happens to them because that's boring. Like, in any sports movie, they got to lose something. 
There's literally a storytelling stereotype that's called, and we said it earlier in the in the program, the hero's journey. <laughs> like, yeah, man. <laughs> the hero has to lose to learn, has to face adversity. If there's no adversity, there's not interesting. Like, and that's yeah, that's just like you have to remember to as people and people like it's so funny because people always joke about wrestling is fake, but people so often forget that like this is a story they're telling. This is mm-hmm. not the Knicks versus the Cavs. <laughs> like this, this is yeah. not about merit. This is purely about what is the coolest story. Like we understand that like Roman Reigns is a character, but sometimes we forget that that means the things that happen to Roman Reigns are part of his story. They're not the mm-hmm. same. Like Roman Reigns lost. He didn't really lose. The story had him losing, but it wasn't like he ever had an opportunity to win. Like yeah. it's, it's like people like don't think through like what are you actually upset about? Like you think that Roman surprised that this happened? <laughs> like you think that Cody didn't know this was gonna happen? Like yeah, he's acting. That's yeah. and maybe personally when he got the news, he was like, oh darn. But like he understands that like it'd be like you know Tony Stark wasn't pissed off when Thanos won. It wasn't like Robert Downey was like, what the fuck? How could you? Mm. It's like no, that's a good story. Yeah. And then we got in game. Like it's it's not that deep, but people really get like invested as if like Cody is personally offended that like the writers didn't let him win this year. It's like I yeah. think he understands this is his job. Yeah. And granted, there, there 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 are some wrestlers who like who do have like very like selfish desires. Like they some yeah. of them do want do, do want to be champion. It's not gonna they, work they for might... me, brother. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. They, they they might be told their story and like then learn it like oh I'm I'm gonna lose at the end and you know they don't want that like I get it you 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 don't want to just be a part of something you want to be the top of something you think you're the best you should think that but my my view on wrestling now is like is like if it makes me feel something even if I don't like it if it makes me feel something I'm rolling because I I just trust that the people who are handling the creative are going to find a way to pay it off. And they don't always pay it off. But if you can get me emotionally invested in something to where I'm I'm angry, and I don't get angry at anything in wrestling these days, but if I'm angry, if I'm sad, if I'm disappointed, if I'm like, hmm, what's going on there? You, you got me. Because now I'm going to watch the next week to see what's going on. When there's a PLE, I'm going to watch. I, I, I get invested in that. And I think as whether we're like, and I, I you know, if you're a young wrestling fan, I, I told, I, yeah. I, I was, I was sick when like Brock Lesnar left. I was Bro, sick when Brock when lost the, to Eddie. Like, I remember the Rock and Sock connection losing to Evolution. Like, I don't want to talk. That makes me mad to this I day. <laughs> like, I'm like, the Rock and Sock connection was the greatest shit of all time. These <laughs> niggas beat the Rock and Mick Foley at WrestleMania. Bro, like I'm getting upset just thinking about it. <laughs> so I get it. But yeah, it's like that's the point. They wanted mm-hmm. to make you upset. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, trust me, I've been there, dude. And it's and that's a that's a really great segue <laughs> into to my pre-write. Um, because especially like that phrase that you used, Armand, the LW. And and it's funny because when I think about that, the first person that pops to my mind. Are the very same is the very same person who the fans of right now. A lot of those people, not you know, not all of them, but a lot of those people or whatever. Um, they had like I'm talking about them when I say this, and that person is Jay Uso. How did Jay Uso become main event? Jay Uso. He lost to Roman Reigns. That's the first thing that uh. happened on this whole trip. When you look at like match wise, as as far as events. The first thing that happened is that he lost to Roman Reigns. And then what happened? Then he became main event Jey Uso. So, like, you have to lose. And, like, uh, so, like, you know, the people who've been listening to this podcast for a little bit, I, I told you a little bit, like, what I do in my work. In my work, you we we literally do things on purpose to put them out there and see what about it is fucked up and what about it is right. And then we come back and we go, we keep the things that are right, we change the things that are fucked up. Or whatever and then we just keep going from there and it's like why like to, to me if you can't connect with that that says something about you which is that's what my whole pre-write is about which is like you know it's funny to me how i'll i'll see especially on and this is more directed at the iwc because that's where I'm, I'm seeing most of these people it's funny to me how i'll see someone who says i like wrestling who says i understand what wrestling is 
but at the same time will be upset at decisions in wrestling not un like which is weird to me because if you understand wrestling then what you understand is that this is a business this is a first and foremost if money is not coming in the door you're not seeing nobody in that motherfucking ring or whatever you might see that shit in your local hometown where you live but that's because no offense, just like you, them niggas don't got shit else to do or whatever. Like, and it don't cost them that much to do it. But some people like to make more and like to do more. And that's what the WWE is. And it's very weird to me how you guys have been watching this product for however long you've been watching it or whatever. Can understand as much as you understand, enough to go on the internet and say whatever it is that you need to say, but still not also understand that what you like is not the same thing as what brings in a dollar. Right? Okay? Like, think about it. You live in a system of capitalism. Right? What you would like is for when you do things, you get the money from it. Does that work? Can you go to the CEO of your job right now and say, hey, I'm part of the reason why we bring money in. Let me decide where the money goes. Go ahead and see how, how the fuck that works. So why would you do it as a wrestling fan? Like, it doesn't make any sense. You want this world to work differently than the one that you live in? Even though they've already told you that, hey, this is a business. The wrestlers go out there and they say, I do this for the business. Triple H has repeatedly say, I love the business. Do you know where Triple H's nickname comes from? It comes from the business. He said people mm -hmm. talk about playing the game, doing all these things for the game. I am the fucking game or whatever. And he wasn't saying I am the game as a character in wrestling saying like my wrestling character is going to play on the psychology of another wrestling character. What Triple H was telling you was Paul Levesque is fucking wrestling business. That is in his blood. That's why he's the one running it right now. It's not a coincidence. So I say this all to say, this is the old man yelling part of the show or whatever. All I want to say to you motherfuckers who, whenever you go on the internet, this is for everybody who goes on the internet and whether you've done it once or you do it every goddamn day and you tweet about your disappointment with something that you saw in wrestling, something that you know is a product that's put on TV in order to make money. And that the only reason why they make those decisions is because they thought that, hey, this is going to make us the most money. When you react the way that you, you react, my only response to you, and, and, and because you can't see this right now, you don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to describe to you physically. And they can see it right now. I'm turning around in a swivel chair so I can turn my head and look at the camera and say, what a fucking mark. <laughs> it's funny you say that in our monster thing, too, about younger fans. I do think that is just a thing with youth. I mean, I'm talking because I'm so old. But because um, I think about that with fandom today, and I think there's, I don't know, maybe this is just a me thing or maybe it's an age thing, but it's like, when you're younger, you, your fandom is polarizing in that way where it's like, I like this thing, but I want it to be a certain way. Whereas I feel like as I've gotten older, I've just more so realized like, no, I just enjoy this thing. And I think this is also when you go, because you, you understand things are limited, like there's a mortality to things. So it's like, I just like this thing. So like, that's how I feel about like wrestling stuff. Like I feel this way about The Rock. I feel this way about RDJ with the whole Marvel shit. It's like, oh, uh, dude, I just like, comics so anytime i see one i'm gonna like it and the things i don't like i just won't think about it. i'll just focus on the things i like and i feel like that's a pivot that you make as you get older where it's like yeah you just don't put energy into things i don't like like when people when like the rock was coming back and people were like upset about it, it's like dude i just like the rock i don't give a fuck what he does i'm gonna like it because i just know we're not gonna get that many rock matches and i feel like sometimes people with their wrestling it's like you spend so much energy focusing on the matches you don't like when it's like bro just care about the matches you do like like i don't like every single thing that happens in wrestling but i just don't talk about it all i want to do is talk about the creed brothers in the mid part but like you just I, I think that just comes with age and time or even like sports where it's like yeah bro that law sucked but you should just spend more time thinking about the nice stuff like i don't know what to tell you bro you, you can't get so caught up in that and i just feel like young niggas do that a lot where it's like no, dude, this isn't the way it should be done. And this is garbage where it's like, bro, just enjoy it. Cause, and I think again, when you get old, you realize that. Cause one day, bro, Roman Reigns is not going to be wrestling. Yeah. One why day, you say Cody, that out loud? Why you say that out loud? Bro. And it, it'll that? fuck you up. Cause you young, you don't think that way, but there'll be a day where Cody bros hangs it up and you'll feel dumb Stop as fuck it. being like, 
man, I really wish him and Jay would have had the tag titles for another six weeks. Like, you Wait, feel you, dumb you as fuck. Me Randy Orton is going to stop wrestling at some point? Bro, when John Cena said, I'm doing a fair world tour, when I say it brought me to my knees, bro. You was a little Dirk in the hotel room? <laughs> bro, when the Lord came, dog. Man, I was what? In the of, <laughs> bro, I was in the middle of Target about to start crying, bro. Can you, because, like, I just remember John Cena, Ruthless, I remember that first thing, and I remember the doctor thugging out. And to be like, John Cena is done, it just makes you appreciate it. See, I don't care, bro. He can come out and have a match with Mad Cat Moss. I'm going to watch it. I don't give a shit. Like, I just yeah. love John Cena. And I feel like you got to just, as you get older, you'll switch that way. Between um, those yeah. two niggas, no. it's going to be like 16 shoulder tackles. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, Chen, I, I, I love that you said that. You can get into your uh, not so pre right after. But that's really been my approach. Like, I think even like, even when I was like younger, younger, it's like, I wasn't on Twitter. I wasn't on the message boards. Like there was nowhere for me to really air out my frustration with wrestling. So it was like, do I like, do I dislike this so much? I'm going to stop watching. Anytime I stopped watching, it was just because like I was in college. I, I was just locked into school and shit like that. Like I never stopped watching wrestling because I disliked what was going on so much that it bothered me. And like now with the trivial things, people focus on themes fucking like just like the, the littlest shit like you i just focus on what i like and i also just like wrestling so much that I, I i try to do my best to at least understand what's going on even if i don't love a storyline or a character i just try to at least understand what do they add here what's their value what does the creative see and so when i see people go so hard about things they dislike i'm like bro is it really that serious? like is is this thing ruining your day like is is this is this is this really a negative part of your life? And like last thing, when, when when you when you lock your phone, when you close YouTube TV or whatever you're streaming off of, like does this really bother you that much? And and that's the it, that's it the doesn't. last thing I'll say. That's the last thing I'll say. Um, from a and you know I haven't I haven't got my degree in psychology yet. Or whatever, but uh, outside looking in, it's incredibly obvious to do a quick psychoanalysis on y'all. What it, what you guys are telling us, what you guys are telling us when you go out and you start doing things like this, is you're telling me that you're the type of person that when you have a problem, you don't solve it. The best you can do is cry about it. Mm -hmm. That's what you're telling us. Don't do that. Don't be a fucking mark. Don't be a mark. Uh, speaking of marks and speaking of, you know, just respecting the business, I I am just here to just sing the praises of the NXT's debut on CW. Um, I really, I like the new presentation. I think the black and white is really cool. They're doing something similar on SmackDown with like black and white with hints of color. It just looks, I think it looks really cool. Um, I love the new NXT belts. I've been saying, I've been pounding this table that they had that color they need to get rid of them. And now they're so sleek and I love it. And I just think, Again, kind of like you were saying, Armand, it's like I'm a fan of wrestling. And part of being a fan of wrestling is being a fan of like, again, the journey that they go on. Not even like the matches, just like, oh, it's cool that like you're figuring it out. You're a better wrestler. And you added this move you didn't used to do. And that's cool. And I just we're at a point with NXT where it's like they're and no, no, I mean, this is shade to Gable Stevenson, but like nothing personal because my Olympian brother, I respect you, but like it seems like that NIL pipeline thing, they've really figured out and they're really churning out some people. And it's just cool to see like, bro, I did not see it for Trick Williams. I thought he was just Carmelo's buddy, bro. I mean, Melo's buddy. And he's the fucking man. And it's just like, dog, that's awesome for you. Even if I'm not the biggest like fan, I'm like, that's sick, bro. That like, you have got all these people screaming your name, bro. Uh -huh. You're the man. Whoop I that like trick, it. bro. And it's like, that's what I like about wrestling. That triumph of like, that's cool for him, dude. And like, who cares if he's his he doesn't have the slickest match? It's like, again, I'm from the era where Undertaker will pop out of a casket and I'll pop every time, bro. I'm just here for the drama. And so I just love seeing NXT. And I feel like with it being on CW and back on the road, it'll have, you know more resources we'll get to see probably different stuff because on a certain level i do think the pc just because of its structure and just like the way it is just kind of confines you to certain stuff but i'm just like really 
it's cool to see that, like just aspect of WWE really take off. And I'm always excited with NXT now because it's like, okay, well, who's going to be the next guy? Because NXT always just makes these people. And so it's like, okay, who are they going to do after Trick? Who's the next person they're going to turn into a superstar and be like, man, I didn't see that coming at all. I love this guy, you know? Like, I'm just really interested to see how they kind of grow up before our eyes. I just I just love that kind of stuff. So just shout out to NXT. Shout out to just the heavy the heavy ethnicity shots the niggas who's mad about the rap music and the theme song bro like i i just love it that for us too just like all the beautiful black and brown people on nxt and in wrestling like i've said it before like as you guys know bro wrestling was a white man's game for quite a while and just to see the amount of just talent from all even white talent from other parts of the country it's just like Oh, this is just a beautiful thing. Like wrestling is it sounds so corny. I'm shilling her right now, but oh, like wrestling that, really crazy. for wrestling really Man. for everybody, bro. Like it's really Shields like some up shit for you can WWE. See. Shields Wait, up bro. for WWE. Wait, nigga. is Trick Williams the two time, the first and only two time? Because like Patrick we're talking Williams, about right? The Rock, like part of the reason I love The Rock, Batista, Mark Henry, Bobby Lashley, but these like black and brown chambers because you didn't see a lot of them. And so we're like it's kids right now being like. Who was 10, like, I love Trick Williams. He's everything to me. Like, I grew up watching Trick Williams. I want to be Trick Williams. And seeing him is giving me confidence to do something at school. Like, that shit really, because that's how I felt about The Rock. I was like, seeing someone who looks like me be that confident makes me feel like I could be confident. So, like, yep. that kind of impact with, like, Keanu Wade and, like, Roxanne and just Julia. Just It's just cool. Like, this who's the, the Who's the first and have. only North American women's champion? Is that a, what is, is that a blip? You saw the power, bro. You saw the power with Bianca and Jade, bro. The power. Yeah, I know it's no good. Sister K- Kaylani. Well, yeah, at, bro. When you look at her the big cousin's cake. When you look at the main roster in the WWE women's title, which is something I actually just found out today or whatever. What, have there any been? Have there been any white women who have held that title since yet? April 2022? It has only been people of color who have hmm. held the WWE. Yo, Nia. Look at that. Interesting. Look at Nia, Bailey, Io, Bianca. Hmm. It's just fire, on, man. man. Oscar. It's just mm. fire, man. Oscar, you're right. Damn, I forgot Oscar. You're right, Oscar. Very interesting. Yeah. yeah man. And you just good. and they're not super stereotypical. And I just think it's just dope to see. I just I just want to yeah. say that. Like I just love the business, bro. I what, what, well, I'll just say, say I love wrestling. I love the business. Like I just <laughs> love that shit, bro. I love it, brother. <laughs> I, I feel it, bro. Like I love the business, bro. The power is back. <laughs> I love double double E. I love double double E. I, I love double double E. <laughs> we don't up, nigga. Call, call me whatever you want. I don't give a fuck. This company, all all the bullshit, the Vince. I get it. I get it. All that set aside. Yeah, as much as you can set it aside because it, it it is terrible shit. But this company has just continued to just evolve, elevate, give us good moments, give us great moments for people that 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 look like us and make us feel represented. Like even outside of WWE, they brought in Jalen Brunson, and motherfucking our guy. Yeah. <laughs> Tyrese Halliburton. Tyrese Come Halliburton. On, man. They and then all NFL games, that, Roman Reigns, the WWE Reigns, the Tech game. Yeah. The WWE on, was like, man. and we tapped into the culture, we whooping feet. <laughs> yeah, we with the culture feeling. Come on, <laughs> they brought it. Come on, they know what they doing, bro. Fuck all that, all elite. <laughs> <laughs> Not over here, cuzzo. Let, let, let me see you. Let me see you push a rating. Hey, man. Let me see you push a rating. This tracks, bro. That was fucking oh. silly, bro. Oh my god! Um, but yes, that is our free episode. For them the nigga said, "I don't like you popping shit at TNA for them." I heard the beef. And ha- come on, nigga, <laughs> bro, they come didn't hear the beef. They said, "They said you do a TNA like this." No, 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 no. But fuck all that, all elite. Let me show you a Joe Hendry. <laughs>